Hmm. Oh, I'm gonna feed the dog. So I was just sitting here. This on my shirt. Hmm. Nothing good. It's like fuel. I was sitting here texting with. I'm on a group chat with a bunch of moms who have kids with autism, anxiety, ADHD, and um, we were talking about medicine. And I have this awesome doctor who is at Duke. His name is Dr. Uh, Oakland, Nathan Copeland, and I adore him. And we had an appointment yesterday, which was good, and then we have another one in three weeks. And um, I will say to people out there that, well, there's, there's so many levels of what I'm talking about. One, it's really hard to get in with the right kind of doctor. So a lot of times people go, these are my notes from our doctor visit. People go to their pediatrician and it, you really need specialized care. So Dr. Copeland is a pediatric psychiatrist that specializes in autism. So very knowledgeable about and has lots of patients so can say, you know, I've seen this work, or I've seen that work. And he's a really good listener, which is key. You want someone that listens to you. This is, this is how Christmas decorating is going. <laughs> mm. So that's really important. But the one problem is that I can talk to Dr. Copeland and ask him questions, but I only have one friend I know, maybe two, that live in my town that I can talk about medicine with. And I have a blog, so I have all access to a lot more people than most people do. And you really need, um, it's so important to be able to go over it and say, hey, so my friend Sarah said, what is the new medicine Amos is taking? And I said, it's, um, so it's called an atypical, atypical antipsychotic, and it's called risperidone. And she was like, oh, my daughter takes that. And she's about Amos' size and weight. And here's what dose she has at night in the morning. And it's helped with self-harm, but she still wants to sleep with me. Well, in that 10-second text, I got some really valuable information. I got information that we're at one-fourth of the dose her daughter is on. We've just started it. And it's just so nice. And I'm so thankful. So when my, um, when Amos was really little and we didn't have a diagnosis yet, we went to a developmental pediatrician and then we saw somebody at Chapel Hill and these people were like, he doesn't have autism. No sirree, Bobby. He's too smiley because he is real smiley and hello from the Philippines. And finally at three, almost three and a half. We got an autism. We went to the Undiagnosed Disease Network um, at Columbia in New York and got his diagnosis there. It was super helpful. So he was about three at that point, and I was like, okay, it's autism. So we moved on, and at about, I think he was about four and a half, he was inconsolable. And it was the kind of thing that, you know, your children, typical children get upset about something. But I would say usually, and I had three typical kids, if I had a four-year-old um, that got upset about something, I could tell you exactly what it was, right? Sh he is mad because she ate the last donut. Well, this was kicking and crying and trying to put his shoes on for school a meltdown. And a meltdown is different than a tantrum because a meltdown, to me, I never had any real clear understanding of why it was happening or what to do about it. And then he would get exhausted. And I was never really a person that said I would never give my children medicine. I have those friends because you have friends with ADHD is a little more typical. And I think they realize like, boy, we need the medicine so our kids can do school or focus on a task. So at the time I was desperate and somebody connected me with Duke. Oh, thank you, Marianne, psychiatric ARNP. 
And because my pediatrician at the time, who was very nice, was like, well, we could try a stimulant. And I, like, he called in the prescription and I sat on it for a little while and I thought, you know what? I just don't think this is the right route to take. So we go up to Duke, which is hard. So if you're a mom out there or a dad and you're thinking, I get it when you're thinking about having to take your child to the doctor. Because again, this is not a typical child. And you go to the doctor and you're trying to lock them in the room. I mean, it's torture. So anyway, we go and we meet with Dr. Copeland and Amos is doing who in the devil knows what. I don't even know. I don't remember. I just decided I wasn't going to worry about it. Mm. And I had to fill out all these like questionnaires. And I had done a lot of that before the appointment. So they do a lot of it ahead of time. And Dr. Copeland, I was telling him about Amos. And he said, what you're talking about is not autism, it's anxiety. And I had never, I had never heard the word anxiety. I never had heard it. Did you have problems with throwing, spitting? No, and no hair pulling. Throwing. I bet we have broken, oh, look at there. There's a new TV right now, which is why we were having a call because he got upset about something and I wasn't in here. My husband was, and he's not as, he doesn't anticipate the throw like I do. And he pinged the remote at the TV. We've probably lost four TVs and six iPads. So yes. And so that's the anxiety. So what I thought was autism, Dr. Copeland described as anxiety. And I remember we, he was four years old, four and a half, which is really young. And we started him on Lexapro. In the very first day he took Lexapro, his teacher, her name is Julie Privet. I just loved her. She texted me and said, Amos sat for five minutes at circle time. And she was in shock. And I was in shock. And she didn't know I'd started the medicine. And I said, well, we started Lexapro this morning or last night or whatever it was. And we saw this child who suddenly had always been in a state of either like fight, fight or flight. So he would have these big meltdowns and then he would be tired. Well, as we brought his anxiety level down, he was more even. Like you could put his shoes on. You could get him in the car. Things that most people in the world are like, what? Is that a problem? It's a problem. Um, suddenly he could do. And if you're always in this heightened state, I'm not a doctor. I just play one on TV. So just no. I'm just telling you as a mother, if you're listening and thinking, okay, I need to see somebody. I just want you to know what I've learned. So I'm not prescribing or ascribing or subscribing to anything. Once we got him settled down, well, then he was a whirling dervish. And I was like, holy crap. Like, now he is bouncing off the freaking walls. So the next appointment, I say, you know, he's the anxiety seems better. We're getting dressed. We're able to do these things. But he is insane. And um, <laughs> he was like, well, when you get the anxiety under control, then you oftentimes see the ADHD skyrocket. Oh, me not know this. Um, first loose tooth was a challenge. He was so upset it was loose, meltdown big time. See, I don't even think Amos knew it was loose. The, he had the tooth and, and he, I think we were like walking in a parking lot and I said, oh, and he just threw it. And goodbye tooth. I think I have one of his teeth finally and he's 10. But he, um, that's the other thing that my, that my text group and I were saying is we have no idea. Like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how medicine makes him feel. I don't know how he feels when he's sick. He was really out of sorts last week when we were down in Florida for Thanksgiving on Wednesday. And we went to Barnes and Noble and he was kicking the car door. I mean, really in a bad way. Well, on Sunday, I ended up with this bug. 
Well, I know in hindsight, he felt like, you know what, doo-doo. Because then I felt like doo-doo. But he couldn't tell me, Mommy, I feel terrible. I'm sick. You know, I said at the time, does your head hurt? And he said, yes. And that's all I knew. So anyway, I digress. So we did, We then we added ADHD stuff. Now, what I will tell you is in my family, we have been through a lot of medications. And a good friend of mine I talked to yesterday, she said, you know, the weird thing with us is we don't have the side effects, but the medicine will just, it seems like it stops working. So they go up to the maximum dose and then it doesn't work and they have to make a med change. And I hate a med change. This med change right now is the easiest because we don't have to get off the other medicine. This summer we did a med change and because of these ticks. So what our psychiatrist said is we're gonna start with SSRIs. We're gonna start treating the anxiety, not the with stimulants treating ADHD. So this summer we had to go totally off his Boosperone and we were moving to Mementine. Amos, not on medicine, it bad. Um, I had a friend one time whose their child went off medicine and within like a matter of like an hour, they had swallowed like a half dollar. <laughs> I guess the medicine's working. Mm. So anyway, I can't tell you what medicine will work because it changes. We had a really weird, these breathing tics. Um, we thought he had cyclical vomiting syndrome. He would, <gasps> And I like looked online, I asked some people and I saw online, it can cause ticks. And I reached out to Dr. Copeland and he said, you know, it would be pretty unusual, but let's get off of it. And again, you want a doctor who really listens to you and hears you and your instinct, particularly as a mother, I think is so strong. So don't underestimate what you know. Um, no, at the same point, I will also say when teachers or people ask me, like, well, what do you think? I'm like, I don't know. I don't freaking know. How am I supposed to know? <laughs> I know when it's convenient. Um, so now we have just moved from an SSRI to an antipsychotic. And I will tell you, when the first time we saw him, he mentioned anti. Are you drooling? No. I think this is when I squirted all this stuff in my ears, and then you're supposed to squirt it out. I think, then I licked it. I think that's what it is, but why is it not drying? I just got this shirt from Buori. <laughs> it's greasy, too. Um, just keep licking it. That'll really chase people away. Come be a subscriber. <laughs> no, but uh, anyway. So we're starting on this antipsychotic, which is a horrible, horrible label. And I'm struggling a little bit with that label and I'm trying to let go of that because he does have anxiety. And I was asking him, I was like, you know, he has anxiety over things he's excited about. And he said, that's anticipation anxiety. And then there's performance anxiety, like, going on the plane. Once we're off the plane, he starts getting anxious about when we're going to go again. Your phone is freezing. I'm sorry, Dee Dee. Um, so we're going to, we started the risperidone yesterday. We're going to do 0.25 mLs for one week. And then if he's doing well, I have to look at my, my notes. You have to write, you better write all this down. Um, in a week, we're going to add another dose, and then we'll keep his guanfacine the same, and we, after a week, we will start coming down on the memantine. In four to six weeks, if everything is going well, we can add Vyvanse, which now comes in a chewable, and that is ADHD medicine. So this first week, we're keeping everything the same and just adding, which I find is really good. Um, and he said, now you do need to watch out for tardy vecinodynesia. It's when you get stiff or your mouth is kind of moving funny. And he said, so why don't we have a meet? Why don't we have an appointment in like six weeks? And I said, 
well, it's going to be Christmas soon. Can we meet in like three weeks? And he said, sure. Let's do an appointment at December 19th at 2 p.m. And again, it's just so nice. You know, maybe learn some acupressure. I read that as acupuncture and I was like, you must be crazy. Uh, my son is on live ants. I've heard people really like it. And the fact that it's chewable um, is good. Sue Bochamp, stop it. You go off about your shirt. You're the best. Oh, well, good. Um, so anyway, all about meds. Has Amos ever had ticks? We are on Vyvanse two years now and have had a huge spike in vocal and facial ticks. So that's interesting you say that, Landry. I didn't know that because the other option between Vyvanse is is. Diana Bell, I think I wrote, Diana Bell. And when we were talking about doing the Risperidone, the other option was Quillivance. Um, Yes, he's had ticks, but I think caused by, he never had ticks before. I think the ticks were caused by the SSRIs. Like, so that would be Zoloft, Lexapro, Buspirone, Mementine. Those are SSRIs. I take. Zoloft. And I take, do I take Boosburn? I think I take Boosburn too, which is like Lexapro. Maybe? I'm sure acupuncture helps people, but I would no more try to do acupuncture to, to Amos. Oh. Um, but Risperidone and Quillivance are the only ones that are FDA approved for anxiety for children. So, Kathy, you're talking about Trintelix. So, I guess those two are approved. Antipsychotics approved for children for anxiety. Risperidone, Quillivance. Maybe methylin? Risperidone can increase appetite. So, Aaron, that's interesting. He did talk about that Um the appetite, but Amos is so skinny and thin that I, I'm not worried about that, you know. We tried Quillivant. Um, he has a dual diagnosis of ADHD and autism. We're hoping maybe Journey will help reduce them. They are recent. Huh. Yeah, I don't know. That's interesting, though. Mouth movements. That's what he said, Lisa. He said, watch out for, like, some mouth movements. Those are symptoms. Journey for months now for us and doing well. So I have in my subscriber group, I also have a group called Tales. Tales for special needs kids or something. And it's a place for moms to share. And it's really important um, because people need to have access. Lexapro. Oh, I love that Lexapro. It was so good. Your son is on Quillivant XR, and it has been a night and day difference at school. Really? That's good to know. And, you know, that's the thing. Like, I, I don't want Amos. I love Amos, and I love who he is. But I want him to be the best Amos that he can be. And watching someone get upset and break a TV or hit themselves, that self-harming is terrible. It makes you feel so helpless. Or he was doing this thing a few weeks ago where he was opening the car door. And he, I was sitting with him in the back seat in a cab. We had just flown into Miami. And he kept reaching his hand. And as he would reach his hand towards the car door, he would say, sorry, mommy. Sorry, mommy. Sorry, mommy. He didn't mean to. You're now on Abilify. Well, that's good to know, Kathy. Do you like the Abilify as much? Um, it just makes such a difference to be able to talk to folks about it. And, you know, I was hacked for a month, so I had no access to my peeps. And this is the kind of stuff that I like to talk about. Um, so I really miss being here for this kind of thing. So anyway, I'm really glad to be back. I'm really glad to be back. Really, really glad to be back. And, um, glad y'all are here. So come over to the subscriber group if you want to 
place where we're we're gonna do kind of a daily a weekly Q and A, and I let my subscribers pick topics, which is nice. So you can be like, I really want to talk about medicine, or I want to talk about IEPs, or I want to talk about boarding school, or I want to talk about teenagers. Oh my gosh, can I? I'm joining your group. Yay, Landry! I put the link up. So I have to tell you this. This is real funny. Yesterday, I was screwing around in my phone settings because we have all, I don't know, I think we all share an Apple ID or something terrible. So every once in a while, you'll start getting everybody else's text to your phone or iPad or like a phone will look like it called my husband, but it called me. And I mean, I don't want him to see all my texts mainly because sometimes I'm like, do you know what he did? But anyway, so I was in my settings. Well, I realized my son Thomas was in there too and family share. And so I clicked on his name and saw that I could like limit his screen time. Now he's about to turn 18, but he's my dependent. So I, just for kicks, I started limiting screen time. And then I like did it so he can only watch dreaded G stuff on his TV and then I gave him like 10 minutes a day on Snapchat and like, I don't know, 25 on Instagram. He got an hour of screen time a day. Well, I will say it was impressive that he did not call me last night until 842. <laughs> he was like, Mom, I wish I had a video. Mom, what is going on with my screen time? I need the code. I was like, what are you talking about? He was like, I mean, I can't even get on my phone. It's all I can do to call you. Because it's saying that my phone is about to turn off. I was like, oh, I think it goes to sleep at 9 to 7. He was like, this is not funny. Well, I mean, I hear his friend in the background just cackling. And I was like, it's not? He goes, if you don't turn it on. He's threatening me. If you don't turn it on, I am not going to talk to you until Christmas break. And I said, ooh. Is that a promise? <laughs> so, so freaking funny. He was like, give me the code. I was like, I can't remember what it is. <laughs> I waited about an hour and then I did it. I'm not going to talk to you until Christmas. So scary. <laughs> and anyway, when he called me, I put screen, I like did a screen video, but I couldn't get it to work. <laughs> so you can, all you see in the screen video is me dying laughing. You can't hear anything, which is so sad because it really would have been such a good video. I think I'll do it to Russell next. You can't play jokes on Russell though. Like if I shared a video of him yelling at me, he would be so pissed. You can get Thomas and Blair, but not Russell. What is my code? <clears throat> okay, I'm I'm going back to my tree. My sad, sad tree. I had to go, I went everywhere to get um, Christmas lights today. I went to the Roses, I went to Byram's, finally went to Kellogg's. I did find them there. I don't like to order things online. Someday y'all are all gonna stick in your houses ordering stuff online. And you're not, not Adrian. Adrian's going to be out driving to the store because she likes to feel everything. And I don't like to go online. I like to go in the freaking store. That'll be a video for another day. Goodbye.